What's going on guys? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly technical talk video. Today is Saturday, October 20th. We had another good trading week here at CoreFX last week. Um, a lot going on fundamentally. We had some pretty strong moves. Anybody that's new to this channel, basically what we do here is we do a full-on dive into the Forex trading uh, world markets technicals, fundamentals. Um, I'll go over a quick recap of what happened last week, what's going on ahead this week, re fundamentals, which currencies were the top and bottom performers for the week as momentum usually follows through into the next week. As well, we will dive into all of the charts. We'll go over each individual currency index separately, as well as all the US dollar major crosses. And then I will go over my specific watch list for a week. The the developed trades that I'll be watching, um, the setups I'll be looking to develop this week, and really just a full-on dive into what I have going on in my watch list and my trading for the week. Uh, a lot of educational stuff, a lot of learning to do, a lot of full-on technical breakdowns in the charts. So uh, if you're learning trading, if you're a trader yourself, if you're into trading, um, these videos are great. I release them every weekend, and uh, there should be a lot you can get out of them. Anybody who's returning viewers who've seen these before, thank you. I appreciate the support. I appreciate you guys returning. You know, I love y'all. Um, I hope you guys are still getting something out of these videos. I'll keep them coming. But um, I'm going to go ahead and dive into the information here now, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoy what you see. I really appreciate you tuning in, and I'll catch you in there. All right, so this week we had a pretty good week here as far as moves go in currency markets. Not the best. 1.3% uh, to the upside, New Zealand dollars, the most significant move we had on the week. So it's really not a stellar week, but definitely some movement, definitely some stuff going on. Um, as you can see, New Zealand dollar, Aussie dollar, US dollar, top three performers of the week. And then we had pound, CAD, Swiss franc as the bottom three. However, you can see the Swiss franc, euro, and uh, Japanese yen. We're all you know somewhat close, all under a half percentage move, point move. Um, all somewhat similar and, and you know the pound was the worst performer on the week less than a, a full percentage point move so nothing too crazy but um, you know we did see a nice strong turnaround in New Zealand dollar with it's been getting crushed over the past year or so um, so we are seeing some strength we'll see if this is just a little bit of a bounce off support or if it has some momentum to reverse this downtrend a little bit here but um, these are the momentums that we will be looking to build off of and we want to be aware of each week Switching it over to the news events last week. As you guys can see, um, only have the medium and high impact news here as I recommend everybody does because you don't want all that noise of the other events. Most of that isn't market moving. But um, as you guys can see here, starting on Monday, we had retail sales out of the U.S. that missed um, Prime Minister May, Theresa May speaking uh, Great Britain. New Zealand's CPI beat numbers, beat expectations pretty well, expecting 0.7% rose 0.9%. As you guys know, central banks, one of the biggest things they watch is interest rates. And uh, I mean, uh, inflation rates to impact interest rates. And if inflation is rising fast, usually you see cuts in interest, I mean, uh, hikes in interest rates, sorry, um, to make up for those uh, rise in prices. And that is something that the central banks stay on top of to control inflation. They want to keep it at a steady, you know, one to 3% rise year over year. Um, they need to stay on top of maintaining that. And when we see rising inflation rates, usually that's a sign to um, start paying attention to the central bank and then hiking rates potentially makes currencies more attractive, appreciates the price. This is what got the New Zealand dollar um, going early on this week. Tuesday, we had uh, unemployment rate and um, wage growth out of uh, great, the pound again. Um, Beat expectations, so we have wages rising, which is something that the world has collectively seen pretty sluggish over the past few years with, within this recovery and bull market we've seen in the last decade. And we're starting to see a pickup here in the uh, pound with the unemployment rate maintaining 4% and our wage growth picking up. Out of the pound, we also had CPI miss expectations, which is what led to a weakening of the pound. Um, other than that, the other major event we had was unemployment out of Australia. Unemployment rate ticked lower from 5.3 to 5%, which is great. Um, they only created 5.6 thousand jobs though last month, which they were anticipating 15,000. So that was a pretty big miss, but Aussie shrugged it off pretty well. Um, the pound also missed on retail sales. China's GDP was a little bit lower than expectations. Um, we had Canada's CPI on Friday, which missed 
which missed pretty badly. They were expecting 0.1% growth. They ended up with a negative decline of uh, minus 0.4%. So that is a pretty big miss, and we saw that with the CAD taking a blow on Friday. So that does it pretty much for this week's news. Following week ahead, as you guys can see here, we got a lot of uh, central bankers speaking to start the week off. Nothing too crazy. Um, then we have the Bank of Canada meeting on Wednesday, which is a huge, huge mover for the CAD. And then their press conference following Thursday, we have the European Central Bank press conference, um, U.S. dollars, core durable goods. And then on Friday, we have the GDP out of the U.S. and Draghi speaking. So not too crazy of a week, but definitely some events to watch for. Now, switching it over to the charts. As you guys can see, we're starting off here with the U.S. dollar, what we call the Dixie, DXY, the dollar index. Um, it did exactly as we anticipated this week. So we had this push higher, we had this pullback, and we set a new higher low. As you guys saw, we are on this 50% fib from this move. So we drew it from the bottom here, the swing low, to the top here, the swing high. What that does is get us to try to anticipate where price is gonna pull back before it makes the next push higher. That's what a retracement is, and this is a Fibonacci retracement tool. So um, after this push higher, we had price pull back to the 50% fib here. We had on uh, Tuesday, I believe, this doji lower wick um, hanging man whatever candle you want to call it basically sellers came in buyers ended up winning pushing price back up have a lower rejection wick off this 50 percent fib great sign to us again there of this um higher low swinging into a higher high and what price did when uh thursday tuesday wednesday thursday um price pushed higher right off this rejection it closed higher then wednesday thursday continued to push higher came back up to retest this higher high so the dollar's at a pivotal level here. We are back above this 95.50 support. So we're gonna see we did have a bearish engulfing close off of this resistance. Could get a little bit of a double top forming here. So we'll have to keep an eye. We have mixed price action right now, but we are expecting to see the dollar um, potentially continue this trend higher and set a new higher high moving into this week. Moving on to the Euro, you can see we have basically the exact opposite. And price came down, set this lower low. As we saw, we were calling for a lower high at the beginning of the, this past week. Price rallied up, set this lower high, and what did it do? It sold off as we anticipated, but exactly like the US dollar, but in opposite ways. Now we are below the 110.50 support as we were the 95.50 of the dollar. Um, we're tapping this lower low structure and support again, and we bounced off it. We had a bullish engulfing. So um, have a little bit of mixed signals, but we are in a downtrend, setting lower lows, lower highs. 20 just crossed below the 50 SMA. We're trading below the SMAs. So all in all, technically speaking, we are in a downtrend. We do want to look for a break to the downside, though we got to be weary of this um, uh, double top potential here on this support zone. Japanese yen started to do what we expect, came down to set this lower low, pulled back. What we were anticipating was a lower high, rejecting off of this 50 SMA acting as resistance. Also, if you look left here, we do have some resistance on this area as well in the past and price respected it sold off pretty range bound this week but looks to be ready to start moving lower we closed below these daily lows and price looks like it is potentially ready to start moving lower so we will be looking for a weak yen this week to start the week british pound um another one that's pretty much doing as we expected made this push higher after this higher low as we anticipated hit resistance on this higher high prior structure sold off this week back down to the higher low now um, it is slightly higher than the past higher low so if we bounce here that will be setting a new higher low we have this um, nice gray box here acting as support also on the 50 sma so uh, a lot going on telling us that this is potentially ready for another bounce higher we did have a strong sell-off in the pound this week but um, I do think we have some potential to rally and recover and continue moving higher this week. Canadian dollar broke out of this trend line and channel this week, broke below strong support. I do think the CAD is going to continue to fall. We had that strong CPI number miss this week. Um, the central bank is meeting this coming week out of Canada, and the CPI numbers are one of the biggest things they take into factor, um, especially since Canadian Bank of Canada has been in a rate hike cycle like the U.S., so this CPI and inflation number is going to be very, very, very critical to their decisions. They meet this week. I think we do have some fundamental and technicals all backing a sell-off in the CAD. So I will certainly be looking for a weak CAD um, going into this week, and that will be where we look for setups. 
Swiss franc is still flirting with this very strong weekly support level. Uh, we did continue to sell off this week as we expected after this little rally. We've come back down to the support. If this breaks below this support, that could lead to some strong sell-offs, right? That could lead to a nice move down to this 92.50 area, as you can see prior support down here. Um, so we are in a strong area. It could bounce. We could see it use this support as a floor, bounce and respect it again, and move higher, staying with above this area and in this range. But um, we have a lot of momentum to the downside. Price is setting lower lows, lower highs, below the moving averages, 20 cross below the 50. Uh, really have all technical analysis and technical breakdown heading to the downside. So that's where we'll be looking. Australian dollar still respecting this downtrend. Did come up break prior structure, but it still didn't prior um, lower low structure here, but it still didn't break our overall market structure because the lower high would be up here. We'd have to break that to break our overall structure. But um, we pulled back after setting this lower low and are now still in that area of what can potentially be this lower high. Uh, we want to watch for sell offs this week coming ahead as we could get some nice trading opportunities to ride this wave down to the prior lower low at least here at 70 50 ish support level. Taking us over to the New Zealand dollar, as you guys can see on this weekly chart, I know it's a little bit hard to see here, but um, we do have a bullish bounce here two weeks in a row now off this 65 support level. It's still on a very strong downtrend, so nothing to really start worrying about, nothing to be concerned about. As you can see here on this um, daily chart, price is still just moving lower, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower low. We're in the lower high still. We did have a big bullish candle close on Friday, um, but we are still in this downtrend. We are still below 66 resistance, and we are still looking for shorts. We just got to see if this bullish momentum stays with the New Zealand dollar into the week ahead or if it continues to sell off. So this takes us over to the US dollar crosses, what we call the majors here in Forex. And as we predicted with the dollar, we predicted the same thing on the euro dollar. Um, this was a very, very nice trade that we caught here at CoreFX. It was a full two take profits. We got 100 pips off of it this week. So that was a nice trade for us. Uh, nice, easy, clean price action. As you guys can see here, price came, set this lower low, broke all this structure, broke the 50 SMA, moved lower, set this lower low, below the 50 SMA, pulled back, set a lower high, used 50 SMA, Fibonacci, S, um, 20 SMA, resistance, candlestick pattern. We had this upper rejection wick with a shooting star, all kinds of confirmation lined up. And we shorted it here and then caught this Wednesday, Thursday bull, uh, bearishness caught that down to this low um, we do have now what could be a double bottom forming a little bit of divergence that's a slightly higher peak at the bottom there and this is for sure a lower peak if you look at the candlestick bodies um, this wick did take that low out here as well but we had a bearish engulfing also this could be double bottom so just like with the dollar and the euro we gotta wait and see how it plays out but technicals telling us the downside is likely to be the next move so we will be keeping an eye out for shorts as well as watching to not get caught in a trap and have that turn into a double bottom and be a long opportunity. Taking us to the pound, still respecting our structure, still respecting the trend. Um, set this higher high, pulled back for this higher low, came back up, didn't break this higher high, just retested it, pulled back now, didn't even quite test this higher low. So if price bounces here, that'll be a new higher low that price is forming. Um, we're on a very strong support level. We're on a 50 SMA. So we do want to keep an eye on this pair. It could be a long opportunity to try to catch this next wave higher up to retest this higher high on that weekly level or potentially break it and finally get that move higher. Moving on to the dollar, Canadian dollar, US dollar, Canadian dollar. Um, not the best price action, but we are reversing now, setting new higher highs, breaking structure, hitting this trend line, but we did break and close above a very strong resistance level. Now support. Um, price is up above it. I do like weak CAD moving forward. If the dollar is strong, this could be a good pair to pair it up against. Dollar, J Japanese yen, um, technically still in an uptrend as well. Had this strong higher high push, pulled back. Now this is our higher low, all 50 SMA, bullish engulfing. Price did push higher, pulled back immediately after, but we are still above this little support zone here. Still respecting this daily trend line, still respecting the 50 SMA. So what we could do is look for long opportunities. If price is able to break above this level here right so um, if price is able to break and close above this you could even use this level here um, this daily high here that could be you know a signal to us that this pullback has ended and the trend is now continuing and we are looking for long opportunities again dollar Swiss franc 
still in very strong resistance levels. So we moved higher, we had a higher low pullback, pushed higher again, setting a higher high, but we have very strong overhead resistance here, 99.50 um, for one here. This supply zone, as you can see with this gray box, that price immediately, initially rejected here. Now we're into the box and it's starting to again. Um, we'll see if it has the momentum to push higher. Nothing really looking for in this pair until we get a pullback, but um, that is what we're seeing. All Z dollars still respecting this downtrend, still trading below this resistance. We had a nice pullback, bearish engulfing, back-to-back -back rejection wick. So I would say more than anything, I'm expecting this to move lower before I see it move higher. But really, the risk to reward just isn't there. If you got in around here somewhere, having stops up here or so, and then your target is going to be the prior lower low, having targets down here or so, there's just not enough risk to reward on this pair to be looking to trade it right now. But um, definitely still on a nice downtrend. Definitely want to keep it on the radar. New Zealand dollar. Um, Price came down, set this lower low, pulled back, set this lower high. We thought price was going to sell off here. This is actually a losing trade this week. Price trapped us after it broke lower here. We thought it was going to break lower with this big wick. We got in on this short, and price actually ended up reversing, pulling back up, and then reversing back up here. So we are um, testing this high, testing this 50 SMA. This is a very, very, very significant level right here for the New Zealand dollar, right? So we could throw a trend line here marking these um, peaks. We can use this 50 SMA that you guys know I love using for trend direction. We can use uh, market structure, right? And as you can see, this big bullish engulfing candle here engulfed all three of the prior day's candles, closed above the um, candles of them, the bodies. So we will have to see what price does. This is giving me more signs of reversing now than it is continuing to the downside. But um, who knows, we could have a big bearish engulfing candle close to start the week this week, and that would totally throw everything um, the opposite direction. That would show this 50 SMA being respected, resistance being respected, trend line being respected, structure now moving to the downside. So we want to keep an eye out and really see um, you know, what price is doing. But uh, that is what we're initially seeing right now. So into the watch list, we are starting with the Canadian dollar, Japanese yen. Um, as you guys can see, we have a strong sell-off here. We've now broken the 50 SMA broken lower, um, set a lower low, lower high. Now retesting this lower low. I think this is a good opportunity for a potential breakout trade. As you guys can see here, we have this strong support holding. We have uh, essentially a um, uh, descending triangle, right? So we have this support holding strong here, and then we've got price closing in on it here with this top trend line descending down on price. Uh, we want to be looking for a breakout of this support level here. Again, with breakout trades here at CoreFX, one of the main things is timing. You want to time a breakout around the right time. So if you're trading a breakout like this, you want it to be in London Open or US Open. I wouldn't trade a breakout like this any other time unless it's around a fundamental event that can drive price. You want follow through. You want price to be driven. You want there to be significant momentum behind it, not these false trap breakouts. So we want to be looking for breakouts to occur at the right time so it can Canadian dollar, Japanese yen will be looking for breakouts at the right time. Pound yen, um, although we are still respecting the trend with the SMAs, um, this is one of the few times where I'll be watching it even though it is above the 50 SMA. Just because for one, the pound yen is a beast, strong mover, catch great trades if you catch it right. But also we've been in a very tight range for a few weeks. Price is now broken out of it pull back to retest it. So taking it down to the four hour, you can see a little better here. This was our first breakout, but this was a breakout from a close, uh, from an opening gap in the markets and price quickly closed the gap, came back within the range. So this isn't a true breakout in my eyes. This right here is a true breakout. This strong bearish candle break close out of it, below it. That's a strong breakout to me. Price is now rallied back up to retest the zone. So I will be looking for shorts in this area in the pound yen for this week coming forward at the start of the week. Pound Aussie, different direction with this one. Um, this is why we have to anticipate and wait to see what pairs do. I won't enter these trades same time, but I'll have both of them on my watch list to see which one is going to trigger me. Um, this is an uptrend in the pound Aussie. As you guys can see, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher high, higher low. We've now pulled back. We have a strong lower rejection wick candle on this um, daily trend line. On prior structure, we have a nice setup here. If we throw Fibonacci, I can bet you we will be on a zone from this prior move to this prior high here. You can see we're right on the 50% fib, right? Um, so this is a great opportunity. We'll be looking for longs. We'll be looking for breaks at the counter trend line to look for long opportunities here this week. 
pound New Zealand dollar. Um, another one if we see some strength in the pound and if we see the, the New Zealand dollar losing its momentum. As you can see, this was a very strong week bearish so we don't want to come and buy against that bearish momentum just something we'll keep on the radar because we are on a very strong level of support also hit the 50 sma in an uptrend after setting a higher high so this could be a higher low could be something we're looking for there euro pound another one we got a nice setup here price is setting lower lows lower highs lower low lower high have a potential double top forming here boom boom um on a lower high price hit and rejected this 200 SMA and the 20 SMA very significant level here upper rejection wick we're below all the moving averages downtrend is intact so what we want to do now is look for our trigger to get a short our triggers are shared in the monthly um, core FX subscription room $50 a month we share all the trades that we take in there um, so we will be sharing the trigger of this trade there if it triggers but we'll be looking for a trigger to send it lower and then looking for it to make its way down to this lower low here Euro Aussie is another pair we're watching this week. Pretty similar, um, only to the upside against the Australian dollar's weakness and downtrend. Um, so price came up, set a higher high, pull back, set a higher low, pull back and actually set a lower high and then a lower low. But we came back up to set a higher high and back to retest this prior higher high. Pull back now for a higher low. On strong support, very strong rejection wick off this 50 SMA. This is our last test of the 50 SMA. If it breaks it, then it's rolling over. But we'll see if price has momentum this week um, to potentially come back up and give us a long opportunity. Not the greatest, not anything I'm waiting to pull the trigger on right away, but it is something that I have on the watch list that I'm watching. Real quick with what we were watching last week, Aussie CAD, we were looking for shorts off this resistance. Looked nice to start the week, however, it did reverse and come back up. We are still respecting this downtrend. Um, even though we broke this resistance here, we are still below 50 SMA, so we could see this reverse, could potentially see a setup still. Um, you could also throw trend lines in here, and it is still respecting the downward trend line. Um, so this isn't off the table, just tough price action this week. New Zealand dollar, this has reverse trend to me. This has broken structure. This has broken the trend line. It's broken the 50 SMA. Strong move higher. So now what we can expect or watch and anticipate is a pullback to retest and then look for long opportunities to catch that next push for the higher high off of it there. All right, guys. So that does it for this week. Um, Forex markets, Forex pairs, indexes, news. I'll go ahead and hop into the S&P 500 real quick, which is the stock market in the U.S. As you can see, this 200 SMA price is still messing around with it, still holding it here. Um, price sold off very strong, rallied, and is now just basing basically. We're waiting to see what price is going to do next. Um, but whether this moves higher or lower, that has a lot of impacts on the Forex market, so make sure you're paying attention to it. Gold broke this um, resistance, and as I've been telling you guys, now it's in the buying zone for me. I'd be looking for longs off any pullbacks and retests. So um, this is still potential for long opportunities. Maybe it pulls back and you get long off that, or maybe it breaks above this resistance. You play the breakout. Either way, I would be looking for longs if I was trading gold. And oil had a sell off this week, broken close back below $70 a barrel. Um, so that is a significant sell off. We broke the 50 SMA, broke structure. Um, really, it's just showing signs of weakness out of oil this week and potential reversal. So um, another thing that can lead to weak Canadian dollar. Canadian dollar is really starting to set up, guys, like a nice short this week. Fundamentally, with the missed inflation, the Bank of Canada meeting this week, Oil prices, fundamentally, um, that affects Canadians, the Canadian economy. They're a very oil-dependent exporter. They have very oil-dependent. And when oil is not doing good, that means it's less revenue, less money, less trade. That Canada as a whole is having less demand for the Canadian dollar. Um, so that affects the Canadian dollar. Um, oil selling off is another thing to look for weak Canadian dollar. All right, guys, thank you very much for tuning in these videos. I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything, always know you can feel free to reach out to me with anything. Don't forget to check out the website. We still have a free one-week trial of the Signal Room. So we have um, a room where we have two traders sharing their live trade setups 24-7 throughout the day. We identify high-probability trade setups. We teach you how we apply this technical analysis. We look at trends, structure, all these kinds of things. Um, we cover support, resistance, candlestick patterns, all that we employ. Um, teach you how to employ proper risk management, how to use position size calculator, all that, um, how to trade like professionals. And uh, you'll learn the different order types, how to use them, 
Um, we have a video library once you sign up outside of the free week where we have educational content. Um, we have weekly webinars like this video we're recording right now where we go over different topics, we go over what's going on in the markets. Um, a little breakdown of who we are as traders, what the trades look like that we share in the group, um, some testimonials of how people have enjoyed it. So make sure you guys check out the site if you haven't yet. Get your free week trial. Can't hurt to do something for free. See how we do. Maybe you can catch some trades that win you some money and uh, help you pay for a free month afterwards. All right, guys. Thank you very much. All my returning viewers and monthly subscribers, I love you guys. Um, I really appreciate it. Anybody ever has any questions, feel free to reach out. I hope you guys have a great rest of the weekend, and I hope we have a great trading week ahead. I'll see you guys out there.